Good evening, everyone. Hey, do me a favor, check the Wi-Fi. Make sure it's on. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Good evening. You guys are here live with Brushed by Brandy. My name is Brandy, and I'm a Dixville Paint Brand Ambassador, and I paint with you guys here live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and tonight we are going to create a burlap textured look. So we're going to play with a little bit of texture, a little bit of paint, and we're going to, um, I'm going to show you on a sample door how I got that look. So if you want an example of what my finished piece looked like with this look, you can go over to my page <clears throat> on Facebook at Brushed by Brandy, and I posted an example there earlier. So you guys, my husband Sean is here tonight to answer any questions you might have, so pop on and ask any questions you have as we go through. Um, but let's go ahead and get started painting. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys is I have an example of a burlap texture, and I just wanted to show you this. So this is kind of my inspiration. When I was doing this, I was going with for the look of a, of a vintage seed packet. That was what my um, inspiration was because I ended up putting sunflowers on it. Um, and so it's a basic, if you can see in the texture of this piece of fabric, there's a basic cross hatching in it. That's kind of um, what I was looking at. Are you directing traffic? Yes. I just want to, okay. Yes. Just, just stay, checking. Stay home. Go to your home. Um, and then it's not a consistent color. There's different shades of brown in there that I saw too. So that was kind of what I was trying to get to. Um, but it's just a very natural woven texture. So what I'm going to use tonight is when you order the Dixie Bell wood graining tool, this is on their website. And this is the tool used to create a wood grain look in your furniture piece. It comes with this little triangle here. And this is a texture tool. Um, it's got teeth on it, and mine are pretty worn down. So I don't mean to discount as far as location, because we have people chiming in from Australia, yeah. Canada, Hi, all over. Good evening, this guys. is the first time I've seen somebody from Poland. Oh, yeah, I think so too. You feel like you're world traveling when we're on live every Thursday? Let me so get my passport out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have one? <laughs> um, so this is a texture tool. Um, it also helps because sometimes you can get stuff gummed up in the um, ridges of your wood graining tool. And this I've used to clean out my wood graining tool too. So this is a pretty cool little tool. And we're going to use this little triangle tonight. But it comes in a kit with the wood graining tool when you order them. Okay, so for creating this look, um, I'm going to use a variety of Dixie Belle browns. And I'm going to give you some options. I don't think we're going to use all of these tonight, but some different shades that would work. Of course, if you're creating a burlap look, what color works best but burlap. So we're going to use Dixie Belle burlap, which is this lightest beige here. That's definitely a color I saw in my burlap fabric. It's a nice warm beige. Um, I also have out Mud Puddle. I know I'm such a huge fan of Mud Puddle, but this is actually a case where I could see a, a reason for using Mud Puddle, which is another brown. Um, it's, a, it's a brown with more uh, pinkish undertones, I guess. Um, this is pine cone. I'm definitely going to use pine cone, another warm brown. Um, and then I've got out chocolate, too. I don't know that I'm going to use chocolate. I'm probably going to stick with the putty and the um, burlap. So I just want to say hi to my new BFF, Peggy. Sorry, you're trying to do business. She's the first one that said hi, Sean, and then it's followed by hi, Brandy. Oh, well, yeah. sorry. It's an exclusive yeah. club. Um, so when doing this, what I would recommend is that whatever piece you're working on has some kind of clear coat on it. And that's because we're going to run this texture tool over it. So this is just a sample cabinet door that I'm working on here. But when you run your texture tool over it, if it's raw wood, it doesn't slide as easily. We want that slide. So whatever you've got, put a, put a clear coat over it just so you get a little bit less grip when you're running your texture tool over it. But I'm going to take my Dixie Belle burlap and I'm going to mix some texture in it. And the reason I'm going to mix texture into it is because when I create the ridges with the texture tool, this is going to make my paint a little bit thicker, and it makes my texture a little bit thicker, too. So let me take this down for a second. So okay. Stacy had a question I just want to get some more clarity on. She's asking if you can mix white and black, but I'm guessing for like a swirl, like a, like a marble-esque. So I'm just throwing that out there yeah, for Yeah, I would be curious what kind of mix into white and black. If, if you're talking about blending white into black, 
that is a really tough blend. Um, I say this regularly that the color in tone your your or the closer in tone your colors are, the easier they are to blend. The further apart they are, the harder they are to blend. So you're just making a challenge for yourself. So I put a little bit of my paint in a little dish right here. And then I'm going to scoop in a, a, just a tiny bit of sea spray because I don't want to create like a paste texture. I just want like a thinned out or a thicker paint texture. With sea spray, I always recommend that you add less first. You can always add more, but start slowly, mix it in and see if you like where it's at. I'm going to give a tiny bit more because you can always add it slowly as you go, but you can't take it back out. Um, you can also add a little bit of water if you start mixing and it's a little thicker than what you intended. Ooh, it's like <laughs> Bisquick. It's like baking with Bisquick. And it basically will just take your paint and turn it into a paste. Um, and you can mix it as thick or as thin as you like. So if I were to stir this up more, I could get those little bumpies out if I wanted to. I kind of like them. Oh, some hummus. Yeah, you can get whatever texture you want out of that. And then you can see it still will fall off my spoon, but it's taking its sweet time. It's just a thicker version of my paint. So now that I've got that mixed up, let me get this stuck out of my way. This is Dixie Bell paint in Burla. I'm going to bring my cabinet door back out. Okay, this is um, a cabinet door with the original finish on it. So. Um, these are um, beach cabinets, beach wood. Of course, I had it standing and now it won't stand again. There we go. Um, it's got the original clear coat on it. I've not put any sort of primer on this. It doesn't have boss or anything on it. I'm not worried about this bleeding through. So those are things you want to evaluate before you start putting your paint on. And then I'm just going to lay this paint on. This is my Dixie Belle um, Premium Chip Brush. I'm going for a textured look. So this is a case where natural bristles... I'm going to use natural bristles, and I don't really need a super nice brush for this. So Melody wants to know if we're swimming yet. No, we're not. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's a slow process. Um, so we are putting a pool in right now, and we're, they just put the equipment in yesterday. And in 10 days, they're going to come put in the <laughs> plaster, which is actually a pebble finish. And like two days after that, we can put water in it. So I'm going to focus on this center section. I'm not going to worry so much about painting the outside rim of this just because I want to make sure I get plenty of time to show you guys the technique and it's layering paint color. So I need to have time. I want this to spread a little bit more. So I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water. I've got a fan going behind me, so it's making it even more sticky. Well, at least you have one fan. <laughs> yeah. Wow, thanks. <laughs> I don't want to get a fat head or anything with my one fan. I usually call that my posse. Just one. <laughs> Just getting an even coat on. It's got texture in it. It's got lumps and bumps in it. It's not perfect. It's got brush strokes in it. The only spot I don't care for is this one right here in the middle. And that's just because it's thicker than the rest of my door. So I've just put a little bit of water and I'm going to even that out with the rest of my door. Yeah, see one fan with 365 viewers yes. or 365 of your closest friends. Maybe that's just one person watching it on 365 different screens. Wow. Do you think about that? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm going to try that now. Okay. Challenge accepted. Maybe it's our kids upstairs watching me on YouTube instead of watching YouTubers on YouTube. All right. Not so likely. So I've got a, a thick, gummy, textured, messy cover coat of paint. And now I'm going to take my texture tool. Well, there's different teeth on the texture tool. So let's see what each of them does. This one is a wider tooth with a pointy edge. I've got this smaller tooth, but they're a little bit closer together. And then these guys here, which are kind Slow of in the middle of the two. Little. There you go. 
So those are the three textures. And I used kind of a combination of the two. This is the pointy teeth. We'll run that through. Okay, more triangle. So you can see the texture that gives. This is going to be the closest together ones. Let's get in there. I ended up using this one the most on my bur burlap look. That's the closest together teeth. And then this is the furthest apart ones. And of course my paint on this side is dry. So let's go over. Oh, because the fan. Yeah, the fan's blowing it and drying it a little bit faster. I'll sacrifice and stand in the way of the fan. That's okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wet this because I do need, I want to be able to work this whole door. Let me get a wet coat on here. Sorry guys, that paint, that I have a fan going behind me because it's really hot in California today. I'm not complaining one bit, it's beautiful weather, but it's making my paint dry really fast. Okay, so let's brush that on. And then we're gonna run this texture tool through. Can you guys see how it gets kind of gummed up in my texture tool? So I'm just gonna take a rag. Let me get a grab a shop towel. Yeah, I wondered. So the lines in this are wreaking havoc with the camera. Ah. Okay, well, you'll still get an uh, idea of how you make it, even if you aren't able to see it. You can see the still shots I posted. Um, on my page and you'll still know how to make it. So I'm gonna use actually this closest together part of the texture tool. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to run there that through my go. paint. <sighs> they don't have to be perfectly straight because burlap is such a nice woven texture that some of the lines in it are a little bit curvy. And then I'm gonna clean this off because it gets a little bit of that sea spray paint mixture. But I, you can come back and mix. This is another um, side of my texture tool. You can mix them, use them all three together and get all different sides of lines running together, which gives a really cool, nice textured look. Now I'm gonna pull this paint back to where I can see some of my wood peeking through. And that's just caused by overworking it. But I want it to get a, a little bit light in areas so that some of my wood peeks through. And I'm gonna continue that as I go through the layers of the paint. I'm gonna keep pulling it back so much that my wood peeks through. And then I'm gonna come back and go the other direction. This is just my first layer of paint. I'm going to layer other colors on top of this. But this gets me my basic cross hatching in my paint. I'm gonna use the um, pointier side for a second. I'm just gonna get it down. Um, I scraped that back a little bit more. Those pointy teeth kind of have more bite on the paint. And I pulled it back to the wood a little bit more. And then every layer I do after this. <laughs> Stacy has more kitchen cabinets. No, 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 no never no. again. I had somebody message no, me no. and say, are you guys getting into kitchen cabinets now? I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope. Stay far away from those. Kitchen cabinets are no joke, guys. I'll stick with furniture. Okay, I like this. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. I abuse this paint with that texture tool. And I've got some cool spots here where I pulled it back to the wood up in this corner. I really like the texture right here. It's got great cross hatching, but this is just my first layer. I'm gonna dry this a little bit and we're gonna come back and put another layer over the top of this. Just this alone is a, just a really cool look. So what I'm doing is if you feel the paint as you're trying to dry it, if it's got any coolness coming off of it, a cold feeling, it's still got moisture in the paint. So if I put my hand here and it feels kind of cool coming off the paint, I don't even have to touch it and I can tell that the paint is still wet. I do have to mix sea spray again and that will give me a, a minute for this to sit and dry with my hand going. Normally, I wait for dry time in between these coats. I would not accelerate it like this. Now, can you do this with rounded or uneven surfaces? Um, 
I really like it for flat surfaces because when you try to work that texture tool around curves, it's going to get a little bit trickier. It's not impossible, but trickier. So I like this as a way to add interest to um, flat surfaces. But if you had just, you know, just a um, small curvature, curv curvature, but if you have heavy moldings, it's going to be a challenge. You know, a, a big fluted molding or anything like that. It's going to be a challenge to get the teeth of that texture tool in there. So let's go ahead and mix our next color with some um, sea spray. So this color is Dixie Belle Pine Cone. I know, I would not normally be a fan of brown on brown on brown, but it's kind of required for this look, right? Um, putty is a color I wanted to talk about, Dixie Belle Putty. I love the color of it as far as a brown goes, but it turns a little bit green sometimes. And so you'll notice I'm not using putty with this because I don't want that green undertone in it. So this is Dixie Belle Pinecone. I'm mixing in my sea spray. I'm just going to stir them together. And all it's doing is creating kind of a paste. Now it's just a thicker version of my paint, honestly. It's, I'm not going that thick with it. I don't want it, you know, this one's probably a little more runny than last. But I don't, I don't want it so thick it's not even moving. I just want it thick enough that it creates those ridges when I run that texture tool through it. So now I'm going to take another brush. That's pretty dry, but I just love this texture over here. It's got really cool texture. I'm going to go right over the top of it. So this is my pine cone and sea spray mixture. I'm going to brush it right over the top and, and I, let me dry brush this really quick because that will help you guys see some of the texture on the top. Just that little bit of dry brushing and you guys can kind of see the texture that I've created over here. But I'm gonna add more. We're gonna run that texture tool through it again into this layer. Man, that fan is killing me with this thicker paint. I'm trying to stand in front of it. I'm just brushing this on, again, using my Dixie Belle Premium Chip Brush. And we're not focusing on the moldings on this door. I'm just gonna, let me move my sea spray before we end up with a mess of white powder all over the room. I'm, I'm using the water, you guys, because my paint wants to dry as soon as I put it on. It's thick paint. It's really hot in California today. We're in the 90s. And then I've got a fan going in the background and it's drying my paint nearly as, as soon as I put it onto the board. Okay. So now we've got a coat of my um, pine cone and sea spray mixture. And I'm gonna take my texture tool and with my paper towels handy so I can wipe it back off because the teeth in it do get gummed up. I'm gonna start running this through my paint. And it pulls it back. I can start seeing some of that burlap underneath. Get another shop towel because I'm pulling off a lot of paint and it's that thicker paint. I'm going to run through one of the different types of teeth because I like the combination of them both. This is the pointier teeth, not that you can see because it's super gummed up. Now you can see it's getting all these little um, bits, like little chunks. And those, I'm going to sand this. When it's all done, I'm going to just fine sand this and it will knock all those loose. So same as I did on the first coat, I'm going to overwork some areas of this. And what is the texture you're going for? I'm going for a burlap texture, kind of a woven look of layered browns. And you'll see when I'm done with this, you're going to see these layers of browns coming through. Just here, with, we're going to do one more layer on top of this. 
but you can see just here with the pine cone, I can see that burlap peeking through. This is a little darker than I want right now. The pine cone is darker, but it's gonna look like a darker, um, a darker strand woven through my final texture. And then I'm gonna come back and, and, and I'm gonna overwork this spot right here because I really want it to pull back. And I'll leave it kind of uneven in areas. One, you know, if I notice on this, I notice that it's got some darker brown. This is a, an example of burlap. It's got some darker brown spots woven into it. And it's uneven. There's places where um, it's woven with a, a chunkier texture. Here's a good one right here. With a chunkier texture and somewhere it's thinner. Um, it's just very natural. So again, I like where this is. I'm going to dry it. Apologize for all the dry time, but I know you guys wanted to learn this look, and it has a lot of dry time in there. So these layers that I'm building up, every one of them is going to show through just a little bit. My final color is going to be my dominant color, and I'm going to use the burlap again. Um, you can do a third color if you want. You could layer on a third, get a third brown um, sandbar or if you wanted to come in with mud puddle, but whatever you put on the top, it's going to be your dominant color. I'm going to come back to my burlap because I figure what better for a burlap look than burlap. So now with the paint dry, you can really see some of this variation coming through. And it's kind of nice to just do messy, uneven looks that you don't have to worry about perfect brush strokes. And this textured look is one of them. This would be a great look if you've got some damage on your piece that you're trying to camouflage. A little bit of unevenness. Say you had to fill a spot with some Dixie Mud where your veneer was damaged. Um, you could come over that with a textured look and it would really camouflage any unevenness you have. So I want to come back to my Dixville Burlap. This time I'm not going to mix it with the sea spray. And that's because I've got my texture kind of established. I just want to come over it with a thin coat of paint. Let's see what brushes I have here. I'm just choosing a random brush out of my box because I only brought out two chip brushes. And I'm just going to brush this on over my I don't want to overbrush it because number one, my um, paint underneath is not too dry. I've been accelerating the drying process. Just enough paint on here that I can run that texture tool through again. My final color will be burlap, but it's going to show some of that pine cone peeking through with a lighter color underneath it. Ignore the edges here. I'm getting messy around the edge of my cabinet door. Even just dry brushing over that texture, I can really see it coming through. And then I'm going to take my texture tool yet again. More triangle. More triangle. More cowbell. And I'm going to run it through this last coat. Now this finish didn't quite have the glossy finish that the piece that I originally did had. So I'm not getting as much of the wood peeking through. And that was just a matter of when I ran the silicone tool through, it pulled the, it pulled the paint right off the wood and it, it shows some of the wood through. I don't have as much of that here. So if you weren't accelerating the dry time, how long would you wait? I, I like to wait overnight in between coats. I usually do one step each day on a furniture piece and I wait overnight in between coats. So I also did not get quite as even of a coat on, on my final coat of burlap. So I've got more of my pine cone peeking through and that's just a matter of personal taste. So I'm gonna give you another example. This has more of the pine cone peeking through. You can cover that up as much as you want just by making your last coat of paint, more even. I 
thicker, whatever you want. I feel I feel like I want to hide these edges because when you really just look at the texture of the paint finish, it looks great, but it's messed up by seeing how messy these edges are. So then on the furniture piece that I did like this, this is where I attached my molds and I cast sunflower molds using the, the Forest Treasures mold. It's a silicone mold by Redesign with Prima and I cast these in casting resin, two part casting resin. Um, amazing resin is what I used. And when you're using the triangle, how much pressure are you putting behind it? Quite a bit, quite a bit. I'm working, um, if you wanna see, I'll come in again. I've got pressure on it. I want to pull that paint back. I'm not trying to be gentle to it at all. I want to create all this. I mean, this texture is it's so good. And then I came back and I put dark wax over this. I don't think I can dark wax this because I think that rubbing and my, and I've got three layers of paint thickened with sea spray on here. If I rub it with a wax, it's going to start pulling. So, um, but when I came back and I put dark wax in here, the dark wax found all the low points and gave me even more variation. It was just beautiful. So you can really control how much variation you want in your paint finish. Like I said, by, by getting that last coat more even, you can pull it back to the wood. I've got more of my putty showing, um, putty, not putty, more of my pine cone showing in more areas. But I really like that. So then I took my molds, which is the Forest Treasures mold. Let's go ahead and attach some molds. And for this particular one, it comes where you have to cast the um, petals separately from the center. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm attaching these with Type One Quick and Thick is the adhesive I like to use for attaching molds. Hopefully those will stay without migrating down the front of my piece. I want to give you a little <laughs> example and then I'm going to show you how I shaded these using um, using our gel stain. So I built it up where I put the petals first and then I laid that center on top of those petals. And can you see how it kind of covers the edges of the petals? Whereas if you try to attach them on the outside, it leaves this weird gap in between. So I thought layering them gave it a little more natural look than having them, you know, lay side by side with the gap in between. So then I can, I can attach the center on here. Now what I'm gonna do, cause my glue's not gonna dry in time so that I can work with this, is I'm gonna just hold it with a clamp. Let's see, it's not gonna be long enough. Of course, mm -hmm. I need a bigger clamp. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin this guy on here with a clamp just to hold it so that we can do a paint finish on the flower itself and I don't have time to let that glue dry. I don't know if your drawer's gonna hold on the easel. Yeah, we're gonna clamp on there. That weights it. Oh, I'll hang on to it. Okay, and then I wanted to show you guys how I, these are painted in Dixie Belle Kernel Mustard, and then this is my burlap color on here again. But I'm gonna come in with a little bit of our gel stain and show you how you can shade with paint with the gel stain. So this is No Pain Gel Stain in Walnut. And let me grab a little artist brush. I'm just browsing through my artist brushes to see which one I think would work. I want a natural bristle brush with fairly dense bristles. I think this guy, so this guy. Yeah, I like this guy. It's pretty messed up already too. Let me take this cabinet door down because it wants to fall. And I'm gonna lay it flat. Are you okay if I lay it flat? <gasps> I know. What the? Do you hate me right now? Now? <laughs> Always? Uh -huh. Okay. Pry the lid off. Now with this, do you seal it before you wax it? Um, I, I, my sealant on that furniture piece, I did on camera and I, I sealed it with wax. So I did a clear coat of wax and then my brown wax. It might be dry enough. Eh, no, it's really wet. It's really wet. I don't want to try to wax that. 
And I'm just gonna take a little tiny, tiny bit of no pain gel stain. Now I love the no pain gel stain because it's an oil-based gel stain. And so it gets this nice smudgy effect. I'm gonna lay most of it off of my brush. And then I'm gonna come in where my petals and my um, flower center meet. And I'm gonna dirty it up with this no pain gel stain. This is no pain gel stain in walnut. I think I used espresso, which is a little bit darker color. But oil base have this smearing that you can't get with the regular paints. It just, and I can dirty it up and really bring out some of the highlights in that mold. And then you can see how it has kind of a shad shadowy effect in that paint finish. You guys want to put a little bit of wax on here? So I'm going to grab my best stain wax in clear and in white or in brown. All right, let me dry this a little bit more and we'll put some wax onto this finish and then you can see how I would finish this off. I'm taking a chance here, guys. I'm gonna wax this even though it's three wet coats of thickened paint that haven't had enough time to dry. This has a lot more of the putty showing through than my original version did, but I think it's really pretty. That's just personal choice. All right, waxing is kind of an aggressive thing to do, so I want to make sure that my paint is nice and dry before I try to come in here with wax. And I'm going to use a little bit softer brush than I might normally use. Oh, here, this one will be good. I'm going to use, this is one of the Redesign with Prima um, natural bristle brushes. And I'm going to use it because the brushes, or the bristles are a little bit longer, so it's not quite as... Um, abrasive and that way I can just kind of feather this wax over the top of my finish instead of really rubbing it in. So I like to put wax on with a brush. You can also put it on with a, um, a rag and I use kind of a circular, circular motion. It takes very, very little wax. So you'll notice when I'm dipping my brush in, all I'm getting is just the tips of my brush in the wax. So can we step back a second? Yeah. Why the no, pill, uh, no pain gel stain for the flower? I just used it for shading. I like that the um, gel stain is an oil-based product, and so it gives it gives you that smudgy effect. So I chose to use gel stain on that. It um, oils uh, smear like the paint. The paints are water-based, so oils give you a smeary, smudgy effect. So you can use the gel stains decoratively in addition to using them to get a wood finish. So I've got a coat of clear wax over this. Um, it's If I touch this, I don't have wax sitting on the top. If you've got wax sitting on the top, it's going to stay sticky. It doesn't ever really cure when you use too much wax. So if you're finding that your wax is staying sticky for a long time, you've used too much wax. And then I wait about 15 minutes and I come back and I'll buff my wax out. So I'm just taking off any excess, and that would be a beautiful finish right there. If I touch it, it's buttery soft. It just gives a softness to the paint. Um, it takes away that chalky feeling that a chalk-based paint can have. And then let's put a little bit of dark wax on here too. So I'm gonna use my same brush. And now I'm gonna come back to besting wax in brown. And that's a pretty new container. I kinda don't wanna touch it. So again, I'm just going to tip my brush. It takes very little wax. And then this, I'm going to really concentrate on some of these areas that have more of the texture in them. And it really starts to find all that texture. And then the rubbing motion kind of brings, take, pulls back some of the paint off the top. And I can start seeing the burlap against the pine cone. And then I'll buff that back away. 
I love this area right here. It looks like kind of like alligator skin, but can you guys see how the high points are the light, um, the light of the burlap? And then down in low, I've got some of the pine cone with the dark wax. So this is where you really find the texture of your paint finish. I'm surprised you guys, I am, I, this is not pulling my paint at all. That tried really fast. And then I'm just buffing it back away. Just using an old rag. Can you hear the texture? Yeah, can you? Can you guys, can you see that some of this texture on camera? where it's got heavier texture in it anyway. Even these spots that probably look a little more flat on camera have texture in person. It's just a lighter texture. So some spots have more, some spots have less, and that's just controlling how you use that texture tool. You can come back and put your paint back on and pull it back off and put your paint back on it until you get the texture and even texture that you want. If you want more consistency, And then against this brown, all the natural browns against the brightness of the yellow flowers with Colonel Mustard for a really nice contrast. So that sound is just my um, rag rubbing against the texture. The corduroy? Yeah. That's my cor it's my cor <laughs> thighs rubbing in my corduroy pants. <laughs> Um, so another thing you can do is you can come back with your clear wax and clear wax will kind of erase dark wax if you feel like you've gotten too much and I could lighten my dark wax in areas and leave it darker in others so I'm coming back with clear wax and I'll buff that off again and then I can really leave some of the areas dark and some of them light so let's go over a few things. Yes. Triangle piece, your yes. texture piece. Where do you get it? Um, when you order from Dixie Bell, you can order their wood graining tool. Oh, mine's on the floor. You order the wood graining tool and it comes in a kit. It's got um, the wood graining tool in it with two heads and it comes with this. It's in the package. So it's the wood graining kit that you want. But you'll find this hidden in the back of your package and you think that it's not good for anything. This is a texture tool and it's super cool. So use it for te textured looks are great. Next, your mold. Yes. Where is that from? Um, that is a mold by Redesign with Prima. I will put a link up after I get off. Um, I'll put my affiliate link up where you can order those. All right. So I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see from a different angle. I love, love, love this spot right here. So this would be a matter of I could just work my paint until I got more spots that look like this, if that's the look that I'm going for. When I touch it, it doesn't have rough, any rough spots on it. It's smooth. I rubbed over it with my paint, with my wax. It's been worked over enough that it's got some texture in there. And then against the colors, and I had more sunflowers, but that gives you an idea what the colors of the sunflower look like and how they were shaded with the no paint gel stain. And colors you used? So we layered burlap, then pine cone, then burlap again. So we stayed in the browns. It's two, two um, colors of brown mixed with Dixie Belle Sea Spray. The Sea Spray just gave me these higher ridges in my paint. You could do it with just the paint by itself, but you're going to get less texture in your finish. So I chose to mix it with some Sea Spray and just make it into a fine paste like that. I mean, even this up here is really cool. And I feel like that could pass for a burlap textured look. If I compare the two side by side, like that is dead, that's pretty spot on. I don't think I could get any better with a paint finish. So anyways, that was the gist of how I got to that look. 
So I hope that helps. I hope you guys go out and create some fun burlap finishes. Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday. Dang it. Yes. Go create some fun burlap texture with sunflowers on it. What better for Mother's Day? Um, I wish you guys all a really, really happy Mother's Day. Come back next Thursday, and Sean and I will be back painting um, live with you guys here on the Dixville Paint page. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy, and you can find me on um, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, I put my link atop, up top in the post, and you can use that to find a retailer near you that sells the paint products. You can also order them online. And then I will throw up a link after I get off for where you can find the um, Horse Treasures mold if you want to make those sunflowers. All right, guys. Have a great week. I'll talk to you guys next Thursday.